friends, and I'm going to go ahead and start reading here. 2 Samuel chapter 13, I'm going to read the first 14 chapters, and we're going to kind of unpack this a little bit, and I may preach just a little bit. So um, 2 Samuel 13, 1 through 14. After this, Absalom, the son of David, had a lovely sister whose name was Tamar, and Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was so distressed over his sister Tamar that he became sick, for he was a for she was a virgin, and it was improper for Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, and the son of Shemaiah, David's brother. And now Jonadab was a crafty man. And he said to him, Why are you, the king's son, becoming thinner day after day? Will you not tell me? And Amnon says, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. So this is his half-sister. So Jonadab says to him, he goes, lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill. And when your father comes to see you, say to him, please let my sister Tamar come and give me food and prepare the food in my sight that I may see it and eat from her hand. So Amnon lay down, pretended to be ill, and when the king came to see him, Amnon said to the king, Please let Tamar, my sister, come and make some cakes for me in my sight that I may eat from her hand. David sends to Tamar. She comes into her brother's house, prepares him food. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he's lying down, and she took the flour, kneaded it, made the cakes in his sight, baked the, baked the cakes, and she put them on a pan. She brings them to him, and he refuses to eat. Amnon said, Have everyone go out from me. And they went out from him. And then Amnon says, to, Amnon says to Tamar, Bring the food into the bedroom that I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made, brought them to Amnon, her brother, in the bedroom. And now when she had brought, him, brought them to him to eat, he took hold of her and said, Come lie with me, my sister. But she answered him, No, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing should be done in Israel. Do not do this disgraceful thing, verse 13. And I, where, where could I take my shame? And as for you, you would be like one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore, please speak to the king, for he will not withhold me from you. However, he would not heed her voice, and being stronger than she, he forced her and lay with her. Which is a lot of words to say he raped her. So this is what happens here. So he goes ahead and he rapes his sister. He's, he, the Bible says here that he had this, uh, you know, that he was distressed and that he was sick to his stomach. And, you know, he felt this way. And it's because he said that he loved uh, Tamar. So Amnon was, was David's firstborn son. Amnon would have been, you know, Amnon would have been a more popular name in Israel if he hadn't committed such a shameful act with his sister. Amnon struggled with the same lust demon as his, as his father. Amnon would have been the heir to the throne of David, and he would have been, the because he was the firstborn son. So here is the heir to the throne, and the same demon that drove David to stay home from war and walk around on the roof, pretend he didn't know Bathsheba, got her pregnant, and had her husband murdered, is the same spirit that's at work, I believe, in Amnon's life here. So he's work, So Amnon is distressed. He's, he's getting sick. He can't, can't stop. He's obsessing about Tamar. He can't stop thinking about her. He wants to be with her. And he calls this love. He, he uses the word love to, de, to, to, to describe this feeling of feeling like he wants to be with her. She's, she's a virgin. He can't, it's not right for him to do anything with her. So he's just distressed and he's just, he can't even eat. He's sick to his stomach thinking about being with her because he can't. So it's understand we have to, it's important to understand that demons are they can influence you and lie, but they are they, but we always have a choice. We ha always have a choice to reject or yield ourselves to this spirit that was at work in this. And so it's important that we understand that part of it. Amnon considered the feelings that he had towards his half sister Tamar to be love. He was distressed, sick to his stomach, but because he was unable to lie with her because she was a virgin and part of the royal family. But this is not love. It was, it, this was a gripping, obsessive, driving compulsion to fulfill a fantasy or a mental image of an ultimate pleasure. So he had this obsession in his mind that he, he pictured 
being with Tamar as being this ultimate fantasy. There was this thing where it was in his mind and he was thinking this is going to be really thrilling. This is going to this is going to be a really fulfilling ultimate level, ultimate pleasure fantasy that was in his mind that kept playing over and over and over and over and it he was obsessing, it was gripping his mind gripping his imagination it consumed his thoughts it consumed his ability to even just have peace during the day because of the fact that he had this this driving thing that was on his mind that he could it was a driving compulsion an obsession to have the, and he had this fantasy or this mental image in his mind that kept playing on a loop in his mind and it was controlling him making him sick he was sick to his stomach he couldn't deal with the fact that he was he couldn't be with her and he called this love but this is not love this was a, a spirit of lust that had taken hold and had gripped him so much like david this demonically charged fantasy drove amnon to disregard and trivialize all of the glaring risks and consequences now think about it david knew all of the he knew that this was going to cause a rift he knew this was going to cause division within the kingdom he understood that bathsheba's um, husband and father were both one of his 37 mighty men that her grandfather was his was his advisor was his chief advisor and so they were connected and he understood that this was going to cause a major rift within the kingdom when he did this but the lust that got grabbed hold of david caused him to do the unthinkable it caused him to just get lose all sight of reason it caused him to just not even think about what was at risk it's the same thing here with amnon this thing had gri so gripped him and so consumed him that it became a desperation to fulfill the fantasy this is what happens when they when you are bound by a spirit of lust that you will when you are bound by a spirit you are there is a driving driving com compulsion to obey that thirst to obey that bondage that's there you are willing to obey that bondage to your own detriment you are you are willing to obey this even you obey that that compo that thirst to obey that thing that you are bound to above all sense of reason people can tell you that this is you know you're, you this is the risk that you're taking this is what you but it doesn't matter it's a driving compulsion because it's demonic because you have it, you have inter it's it's the flesh driven by demonic um influence and so this is what's going on so this is what happens with amnar and he's tripping i mean uh, amnon he's tripping he's flat out tripping so he gives himself over fully to this fantasy he's willing to give it at all costs he had to fulfill the fantasy so much like a drug addict like i said now absalom's sister she begs amnon she says don't do this shameful thing don't take my virginity this way see she's not she's not opposed to being his wife she's not even opposed to this hap that, that but she doesn't want him to rape her she doesn't want him to just take it she doesn't want it to be dishonorable she wants it to be honorable she wants to do the right thing before god she's a godly woman with godly character and she wants to do the right thing and she's saying look and don't do this this is going to change my whole life where would i hide from the shame and you you're going to be like a, one of the fools Let's not do it this way. Just ask the king and he'll give me to you. You can have me. It's not that you can't have me. It's just you can't have me like this. She reasons with him. She tries to talk to him. That if he loved her, he would ask the father and that she would give him to him. And he would give. It, she would have been given over to him. He ignores the consequences. He had to have her and he takes what he wants. He rapes her, his sister and does what he feels like he wants to do. So he, Amnon risks it all to fulfill this fantasy and do these things. And it is, it, it's unbelievable what he does. So anyway, let's move on. Let's go on to the story. Because actually, I want to get I, I want to make sure that I get into the Absalom part of this, which is really good. So 2 Samuel 13, 13, 15 through 19. So these four verses. Then Amnon's response is he hated her exceedingly. Now, he gets what he wanted. He gets to fulfill the fantasy. Seldom is the, is the reality of a thing as, as, as good as this built-up thing in the mind of what's going on, this compulsion that this lust has triggered that's driving this fantasy in his mind. So then he fulfills what he thinks is the fantasy that he's got to fulfill based on this driving thing that, the, that this demon is, is on his mind to do. And then afterwards... 
The Amnon hates her exceedingly, so that the hatred with which he hated her was greater than, than the love which which he loved her. And Amnon says to her, Arise and be gone. Verse 16. So she said to him, No, indeed, this evil, this evil of sending me away is worse than the other thing you did to me. But he would not listen to her. He calls the servant who attended him and said, Here. Put this woman out away from me. Now she's this woman that needs to be thrown out. She doesn't matter to him anymore. And he, now he hates her. He feels hatred towards her more than the driving compulsion that he felt before. So, so he drives her out, throws her out. He locked the door behind her. She has this robe of many colors, which was representative of a virgin daughter of the king that they would wear such a thing and that the servant put her out, bolted the door behind her and then Tamar put ashes on her head. She tore her robe of many colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and she went away crying bitterly. So he rapes his sister, dishonors her in the name of love. This is what he calls love. He loves her. So he dishonors her, rapes her, and afterwards, he realizes, see, this is the thing. It's not so much that he hated Tamar. It's the fact that he hated himself. It was a self-loathing because he understood that this was evil. He understood this was wicked. He understood this was selfish and dark. He understood what he had done was absolutely horrible. And he hated himself for it. He hated the fact that he was now a rapist that was capable of raping his virgin sister and that he wasn't going to be able to escape what he had just done to himself. He had allowed himself to get caught in this imagination, this fantasy. He allowed himself to be caught up in this whole thing. And he was driven by it, compulsive. It was something that compelled him to do it. Then he goes and does it. And he actually does it. And now he hates himself for it. And now what has he done to her? He tells her to get out. He doesn't want to face her anymore. Because what he did was horrible. It was wicked. And he broke her heart. And he knows he changed her life forever. He disgraced her and dishonored her and he probably hated him and he hated himself for doing it. He just wanted her to get away from him because he didn't want to look at her because it was going to remind him of what he'd done and what he now, what he is, which is a rapist.